Although smartphone manufacturers spend the majority of their resources promoting their flagship devices, the mid-range segment is where they face some of the most fierce competition. On the surface, Samsung's first smartphone of the year, the Galaxy A14 5G, appears simple and unassuming. However, given that the top, 8GB plus 128GB variant costs around $250 and can be had for less after discounts and offers, we have to say that the device has the potential to be one of the best 5G devices under $200. There is also a 4GB plus 64GB and a 6GB plus 128GB variant that costs even less. What Samsung has done with the Galaxy A14 5G may be that they have focused on what truly makes a good budget smartphone and checked off the majority of the boxes that they could. The Galaxy A14 5G has the hand feel of a far more premium device, something that would cost around $400, but for almost half the price. The Galaxy A14 5G is loaded with features, has some solid specifications, and is genuinely a good phone for those who want something that gets the job done without too many distractions. There are, however, a few flaws. So, how does the Galaxy A14 5G fare, and, more importantly, is it worth your money? The Samsung Galaxy A14 5G has a simple but elegant appearance. Our test unit was a light green model that looked particularly stylish thanks to the device's textured back. The back panel, which is made of plastic, has a shimmery effect that looks particularly premium when the light hits it at an odd angle. The textured back panel prevents smudges and fingerprints from adhering to it. Aside from green, you have two more options, dark red and black. When it comes to the display's front, the first thing you'll notice is that the device has some noticeably large bezels. The bottom chin, in particular, is prominent. Although the device has a 6.6-inch display, the bezel makes the screen appear slightly smaller. On the front, we can see the front-facing camera hidden behind a teardrop notch. The volume rockers and power button can be found on the right. The power button serves as a fingerprint scanner as well. The left side has no buttons and houses the SIM tray, as well as a micro SDXC slot. A speaker grille houses one of the speakers, as well as the USB Type-C port, at the bottom. Surprisingly, the device includes a 3.5mm jack. Along with the LED flash, we get three rear cameras that stand vertically on their own. There is no camera module or camera island, which gives the device a premium and somewhat minimalistic look from the back. The Samsung Galaxy A14 5G is constructed like a tank and feels solid in the hand. Overall, the device appears to be simple and elegant in terms of aesthetics. The only flaw with the hardware is that it lacks an IP rating, so it is not dust or water resistant. The display bezels of the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G will lead you to believe that the display is nothing to write home about. That couldn't be further from the truth. The Samsung Galaxy A14 features a 6.6-inch FHD plus PLS LCD display with a resolution of 1080 by 2408 pixels and a 20 to 9 aspect ratio. The display has a refresh rate of up to 90 Hz, providing users with a buttery smooth experience. The HDR10 certified display is vibrant, sharp, and very clear, even in direct sunlight. We had no trouble reading off the screen or playing games even in direct sunlight, though the dark portions of videos were difficult to deal with. Overall, while the display is only an LCD panel, it does the job well. The display is sharp and vibrant, as is typical of most Samsung phones, so much so that unless you've been using a smartphone with an AMOLED panel, you wouldn't notice that the display you're using doesn't have the same level of crushing blacks and that high a contrast ratio. People who have used other phones with LCD panels will notice that the display is more refined and saturated. The Samsung Galaxy A14 5G has three cameras on the back. The primary camera has a 50-megapixel sensor AF 1.8 lens and shoots wide. The other two cameras are both 2-megapixel, one for macro and one for depth. The main camera has phase detection autofocus and takes some amazing photos, especially in daylight. When they have adequate lighting and take photos with lots of details, the photos are vibrant and crisp. The photos showed a little too much processing in some situations, especially when the lighting was poor. The dynamic range is adequate, but we believe Samsung can do better once it releases an update that optimizes the camera. However, the camera struggles at night. 
The images become a little grainier, but they are still usable. The night mode does tone things down a little, but it's clear that the photos have been heavily processed. In addition, the camera moves a little slower in night mode than in normal shooting modes. That being said, we aren't exactly complaining, as most smartphones in this price range will have this issue. You can get the camera to take photos with nice bokeh, but you'll need to use portrait mode and, more importantly, properly focus on the focusing point. If you enjoy playing with filters, the camera comes with a slew of them. The front-facing camera has a 13-megapixel sensor. Considering the price, the device produced some decent shots. The fixed-focus camera captures a lot of detail, and the colors are accurate. The front-facing camera has a tendency to overexpose the face in order to brighten it up, but that's a problem with almost all smartphone cameras at this price point. The Samsung Galaxy A14 5G shoots 1080p videos with the 50-megapixel main sensor and the front camera. Both cameras can record videos at up to 30 frames per second. You get some kind of EIS, which is a bummer. The Samsung Galaxy A14 is a capable smartphone, thanks to its Octa-Core Exynos 1330 processor and Mali G68MC4 GPU. The SoC has been properly optimized for the Galaxy A14, resulting in a rather snappy performance in day-to-day -day tasks. Our test unit came with 8GB of LPDDR4X RAM and 128GB of UFS 2.2 storage. We also get RAM Plus, which allows us to expand the physical memory by an additional 8GB RAM. Furthermore, there is a dedicated microSDXC slot, so storage will not be an issue. Given that this is not a top-tier flagship device, its benchmark scores do not set new records. However, in our day-to-day -day usage, which included some intense gaming sessions and a lot of multitasking, it performed admirably. The device performed admirably in lighter games such as Alto's Odyssey. Furthermore, it handled more demanding games like Asphalt 9 and Call of Duty Mobile admirably at 60 frames per second, albeit at low graphic settings. The Samsung Galaxy A14 is powered by One UI 5, which is built on Android 13. That you get Android 13 right out of the box is a huge plus. As divisive as One UI can be, One UI 5 is undoubtedly one of the better versions, and with the Galaxy A14, you're getting the best features the UI has to offer, barring flagships like the S22 Ultra or the Galaxy Fold 4. Bloatware is present, primarily in the form of Samsung's own apps. It is actually much easier than turning off app recommendations in other brands' smartphones. The Samsung Galaxy A14 has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.2, and a USB Type-C 2.0 port for connectivity. We also like that the device has a 3.5mm port, which users will require. The device only has a single mono speaker at the bottom and no speakers at the top, nor does it have an earpiece. Naturally, for some, content consumption and gaming without headphones may be disappointing. The device also includes both SA and NSA bands, for a total of 10 5G bands, covering the majority of the popular bands used by 5G operators. During our 5G tests, we easily achieved 450 megabit per second at 500 meters away from a tower, which is typically where and how we conduct these tests. When it comes to battery life, we can only say positive things because we were thoroughly impressed. The Galaxy A14 comes with a 5000 mAh battery. We get a pretty impressive battery life because we're using an LCD panel and the CPU isn't that power hungry. At 70% brightness, you'll easily get more than 8 to 10 hours of screen time and more than 14 hours of usage time. Our typical usage included video watching, internet browsing, some gaming, email reading, conference calls with the office, and so on. The Galaxy A14 supports 15 watt wired charging if you have a charging block that supports it. The device does not include a charging brick, only a USB-C to USB-C cable. This is another feature of the Galaxy A14, especially given the device's price and the fact that smartphones in this price range support up to 80 watt charging. A USB-A to USB-C cable should have been included by Samsung. During our tests, we were consistently getting to the end of the day with about 25 to 30 percent of the battery remaining while driving it on a daily basis. Given that the Samsung Galaxy A14 costs around $250 or even less, depending on offers and discounts, it checks a lot of boxes, 
particularly for someone looking for a budget smartphone from a reputable and established brand. Yes, there are numerous options from other manufacturers at this price point that offer significantly more features and slightly better hardware. However, they are notorious for poor after-sales service and spare part availability. We also appreciate Samsung's commitment to two years of Android OS updates and four years of security updates. Even if it isn't chart-topping, performance is still solid and nothing to complain about. Unless you're a pro gamer or a heavy user, you won't encounter any problems. Overall, the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G is a solid device that we can confidently recommend to people looking for a mobile phone brand that has been around for decades.